Over the last few weeks, it feels like just about everybody has been voicing their opinion after hearing that the USGA and the RNA are proposing a new model local rule that could roll back the golf ball and reduce distance for the game's most elite players. To do that, they are proposing that this model local rule mandate that the best players in the world use golf balls that are tested in a whole new way. Now, whether you're a proponent of this potential model local rule and rolling the golf ball back, or you're somebody who thinks that the game is just right the way it is and that there should be no changes made to the equipment that's being used by the game's best players, it's really important that you fully understand exactly how golf balls are tested. And let me tell you, most people have no clue as to exactly how golf balls are tested by the game's governing bodies, the USGA and the RNA. So in this video, I want to take you step by step through that process. Now, to do that, I was able to find some footage that I shot a couple years ago with John Spitzer, the Managing Director of Equipment Standards of the USGA, when I visited the USGA's headquarters in Liberty Corners, New Jersey. And I'm going to let John tell you exactly how golf ball testing takes place. This is the mechanical golfer that we use for test conformance of golf balls. What we do is basically we'll get a dozen golf balls from the manufacturer, they'll send them in to us, we'll put them on our mechanical golfer and this is set up to swing the club at 120 miles per hour. It launches our calibration ball at 10 degrees with a backspin of 2500 RPM. The black boxes are launch monitors and they'll take a picture of the golf ball as it flies through. This tells us what happens to the golf ball when it leaves a driver, what kind of spin it has, what kind of launch angle. They all vary. A Titleist may come off differently than a Callaway by slight differences in launch angle, speed, or spin. Once we've determined that for a dozen golf balls, take that same dozen, we'll test it up at the ITR. And the indoor test range is what ITR stands for. We test it at 15 different speeds and spins the speed that it comes right off the club head which in this particular instance is going to be about 185 miles per hour club head swinging at 120 miles per hour and then a back spin of 2500 rpm and then a launch angle of 10 degrees is how it comes off and then we'll test it with conditions all the way from where it takes off from the club all the way to where it lands and in order to determine how far a golf ball goes for conformance that requires 360 shots. Now, you might think that doing golf ball testing like that would be no big deal. If you think about it, you walk into your local pro shop or golf retail store and you see the Titleist, the Callaways, the Strixons, the TaylorMades, and maybe a couple other brands and think, yeah, no problem at all. This should be a piece of cake. The USGA told me that in a typical year, they received between 450 and 500 different types of golf balls to be tested. The RNA, which does its testing in St. Andrews, Scotland, receives about 800 or more different golf balls that all need to be tested. We're talking about tens of thousands of tests going on all the time throughout the year. This is not a simple procedure and it has to be done absolutely right. It has to be done absolutely consistently in order to be fair to every manufacturer out there. Now, the other thing to keep in mind that's really important when we get into this discussion about the new model local rules, there's something called an overall distance standard that John didn't really bring up in that video. The overall distance standard is the combined distance of carry distance as well as rollout that the golf ball goes. And it is governed by both the USGA and the RNA at 317 yards. And there's a tolerance for three yards. So really, 320 yards is as far in testing as a golf ball is allowed to travel and still be deemed conforming. That number is not going to change. However, and this is the biggie, the new model local rule would dictate that for the elite players, golf ball testing would increase the speed of that test driver, increase the speed of golf balls shot down that tunnel to 127 miles an hour, an increase of seven miles per hour, which is a really significant number. So now that you can see the intricacies that are involved with the testing procedures, you can start to get a little better feel for exactly what this potential model local rule change could mean for manufacturers as well as for the game's best players. Listen, not a lot of people are allowed to go into the testing center at the USGA's headquarters in New Jersey. So I hope you enjoy going behind the scenes and seeing exactly how golf balls are tested. And to make sure that you don't miss any of my forthcoming videos, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so that you'll get notifications when new content is coming out. I've got a lot of really cool stuff coming out this spring and summer.